everyone, and welcome to New Trials, the podcast. I'm Priya. And I'm Melanie. The New Trials of Cardcatcher Sakura Shaolin and Friends is a popular ongoing fanfic by Wishlove, and it's based off of Clamp's Cardcatcher Sakura. And in each episode, we'll do a deep dive of a chapter. Let's get into it. Melanie, have you ever pulled a prank? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> hmm... I might need to think on that one for a minute. How okay. about you? So uh, I've known my coworker Gurdeep since 2019, mm-hmm. and we share an office. So I, so basically, I know how she talks, what and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So our coworker Linda called my extension by accident when she really wanted to talk to Gurdeep. So I'm like, oh yeah, no, you called me by accident. Just call her. So I hang up my phone, and then it rings again from her office. So uh, she dialed the extension wrong the second time. So this time I answered the same way Gurdjieff would say hi to people. And I'm like, (laughs) hi, Linda. (laughs) And Linda's like, hello, my dear. How are you doing today? And I couldn't (laughs) go on. So I was laughing and I'm like, Linda, Linda, it's Amlada, it's me. And she's like, what? Gurdjieff, why why are you pretending to be (laughs) Amlada? Like, no, no, Linda, you called my phone by mistake and I was pretending to be Gurdjieff. And she's like, what? Huh? What? And and what's funny is that Gurdjieff was sitting next to me, and, and she wasn't feeling well that day. She had food poisoning the uh, day before, Aww. and uh, so she took the day off, and this was her first day back to work, so she was kind of groggy. So she's sitting there at the desk, and she's looking at me, using her way of talking. It's like, am I here? Am I there? <laughs> she was really having like an out-of-body experience. <laughs> And and we laughed about that for days. Oh my gosh, it's <laughs> so funny. Well, that did make me think of one. So um, one of the first eye places I worked at, um, there was this girl that would do lens measurements and kind of a couple other things, and I would kind of help her sometimes. And one and one time she went out of town for like a whole week, so I kind of took over her desk, took over her position while she was gone. And so then I got the brilliant idea of printing out all these little Nicolas Cage. Um, like, you know, I don't, there's a certain meme where, like, his head's tilted back and he's like, Ugh. you know, like, I can't explain it. But I printed out hundreds of Nicolas Cage pictures and I hid them all over her office. And I even forgot, like, how many I hid, but it was a ton and so when she came back, like, she noticed it right away because I put one underneath her mouse. So she couldn't figure out why her mouse wasn't working. So when she turned over the mouse, she saw Nicolas Cage and was like, oh, my God, what the heck? <laughs> and then literally, because I worked there for four years, over the course of the next four years, she would still randomly find Nicolas Cage's that I hid just <laughs> where I would completely forget. So there would be times where I'd be at, like, my desk, which is kind of, like, down the hall, and I would know she would find one because all of a sudden I'd hear, Melanie! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, talk about the long con. <laughs> Heck yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> it's so harmless and it's so funny. <laughs> Today we'll be diving into Chapter 26, Living Together. This chapter was released on March 16th, 2001, the same day as the previous chapter. The word count is 5,573 words, which I'm so happy about because I accidentally deleted my notes. <laughs> <laughs> and I listened to the chapter a second time. Everyone is in the ninth grade, and it's the month of May. Time for the summary. Sakar and Sharon were still angry at each other and said hurtful things. A small chest delivered by doves from the Kaitu magician was sent to Sakura with a message that instructed her to open it with Sharon. Sharon saved her from getting hit by a soccer ball, and when she thanked him, she brought up the incident last winter where she admitted that she knew he helped her recover from her previous ball injury. They made up. In the chest, Sharon, Sakura, and Tomoyo found the 5-4 scroll and the blueprint layout of the old theater. The last item in the box was a pair of handcuffs that magically trapped Sakura and Sharon together. They used the invisible to hide the handcuffs after being unsuccessful at freeing themselves with the other cards. They stayed up doing their homework and fell asleep on the couch. The next morning they woke up late and ran straight to school. As the cleaning process for the theater continued, Naoko told everyone how a series of accidents 
to finally the supposed death of a student led to the theater closing down for the fear of the phantom. A phantom. Sharon, Sakura, and Tomoyo went backstage to look for the theater. They look at the theater layout and the, and then the scroll. Moonstone came out and told them that Miho's mother used the handcuffs to stop Nadeshiko from performing so she could go on as an understudy, but she got trapped instead. The, she threw the key in the basement prior to the incident, but Nishiko and Riren used the power, their power to escape. Sharon and Sakura needed to find the key as they weren't as strong. Before leaving, Moonstone told Sakura and Sharon that they had to stay together to uh, avoid danger. Sharon and Sakura found the key in the basement, and among the old props, Sakura saw a floating mask. They used fiery to burn it, but the force refused to take shape as a card. It took on the form as a human and chased her and Charon. Once they were on the main level of the theater, the phantom shrunk back. Tomoyo then informed them that the scroll stated that the Nishiko and the Riren sealed the force in the basement, but they were still at risk of it escaping. Sakura freed herself and Charon from the handcuffs after finding the key, but heeding Moonstone's warning, Sharon invited Sakura to stay at his place until her family came back to the delight of both Sakura, who hated being alone, and Tomoyo, who wanted to watch them live like a married couple. When this chapter opens, once again it confirms that Sakura is the only one who didn't realize that she was on a date with Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this opens the door for yet another S&S spat. It's like, uh, no, no, nothing changes with these two. No, no. <laughs> we get to the old theater, and once again, my suspicions are confirmed that this is no place for a bunch of teenagers. No. 20 years worth of dust, and it doesn't even sound like they're wearing masks. Yeah, there's probably asbestos in there. <laughs> Black mold. <laughs> yes, I bet there's raw and mold. <laughs> yeah, like the school should have got contractors for this. <laughs> Seriously, there are people you can hire to do this job. You don't need to, like, uh, sweat work your students. <laughs> So, uh, to his credit, Sharon does try to apologize, but Sakura moves away. Now, I don't know if this is intentional slash foreshadowing or not, but uh, Sakura checks out of the conversation by moving away. That's not going to be an option for her when they're going to be handcuffed. Ah, <laughs> yes indeed. Can't run away. <laughs> I, I think, I don't, I, don't, I, I don't think this is foreshadowing, but I, it was like a cute thing to pick up. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, she is close enough to see Erica and Sharon interacting. We see jealous Sakura again. She breaks the broom. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I love the fact that Wish Chan makes her jealous. Mm. I love that. <laughs> like, we touched on that kind of in arc one a little bit. But, yeah, still love it. Still mm -hmm. love it. She and Tomoyo take a break. And this is where uh, the Kaitu magician delivers the small chest via doves. And uh, but he tells Sakura and Sharon they have to open it together because, like, Sakura and Tomoyo tried and they weren't able to. Um, so I really like uh, how how Wish Chen puts their, like, making a men scene. Like, Sakura gets saved from another soccer ball from hitting her in the face. And uh, so that was enough for her to make the, her, have her approach Sharon and say, like, oh, thank you. And I know what you did last winter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's, it's a nice callback and and I didn't I didn't think she would touch upon this scene again it's been so long like I don't know I feel chapter three ish but uh it's it's definitely very very yeah. early in in new trials new trials canon well yeah because it's well, it was right before the winter wonderland dance because because mm -hmm. her eye was kind of she was worried it was going to be black and blue before the dance. So I think yeah. it's like mid arc one. Yeah, mid arc <clears throat> one. So so it was really see. It's a nice callback. So nice to see that's there. Yeah. So sh it proves Wish Chan does not forget things. <laughs> so I am not. You know, like we say, like oh, she's might have forgotten. It's <laughs> been so long. I'm I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> Wish Chan is capable of anything as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and if she's not sure, she's got my summaries to dive into. <laughs> In this podcast. <laughs> yes. So, Sharon opens chest with magic. Um, how do you pronounce that? Ofuda? Ofueda? Ofueda. Ofueda. I think. I could be wrong, but I think it's Ofueda. Mm -hmm. 
And inside, they're excited to get the 5 Force scroll back, which I love that Kai stole it from the twins. Yes! <laughs> you know, it's, it's also one of those things where, like, as a first-time reader, I'm sure at this point we've all kind of forgotten yes. about the 5 Force scroll. Yes. So the fact for it to make an appearance, kind of like how it, because it makes its first appearance at the beginning of arc one. Chapter five, the 5 Force scroll. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And now it's making its appearance mm-hmm. again at the beginning-ish of arc two. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, so uh, the and then there's a blueprint of the old theater and like I don't know if they actually use this, but they must. So, so yes, they do. Yeah, they okay. do. All right, because that's how they find the key later. Oh, okay, okay. So the last item in the chest was a pair of handcuffs that handcuff S and S together, <laughs> and it couldn't come out no matter what they tried. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is for you: Is what was Kai's motive in doing this? Do you think? Oh, Kai's just being a little stinker. He found his mom's old handcuffs and and was like, I'm going to put a prank. Mm-hmm. And, um, but like, it, it's really good that this happened because if they were like on their, their, their separate ends of things, they probably, maybe they would have gotten to the conclusion of they need to live together. But um, I, it's like, whatever. I think Kai was just being a little stinker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, like, even though he's only met them a couple times, and he kind of knows them through, like, his database and things like that, I think he's also kind of like us, where he was already shipping them. yes. And so it was his way of being like, I want to ship these two, so how can I get them to interact and mess with them at the same time? So I love it. Again, it kind of shows off his personality without us really knowing him yet. Yes. But I love we're kind of getting this peek into what kind of character Mm -hmm. he's going to be, you know? Yes, yes, yes. No, Kai is definitely a Sharon Sakura shipper. That goes without saying. (laughs) (laughs) Because he wants Mei Lin. (laughs) Of course, of course. (laughs) He wants Shadon out of the picture. (laughs) That's his rival. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The school day ends, and they still have no solutions for their problems. There's a funny scene at the grocery store. And actually, before that, I think there's a hilarious scene of, I think Mm. they're in choir, and then Erika wants to sit by Mm Shadon, and so, like, she kind of, like, forces herself in between them, which I think is hilarious. I don't know why, but just picturing, like, poor Sakura, like, having to kind of have her arm around Erika, like, to me, that's just hilarious to me. It's so funny. Erika's like, why are you guys so close? (laughs) And they're like, oh, we wouldn't be here if we didn't want to. Because you know Erika can sense the magic. She can sense the invisible Sakura yeah. used to hide she the couldn't. handcuffs. So you know that's also just her just completely <laughs> messing and pranking them as well, uh. if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, that, that, that really is funny. <laughs> So they go to the grocery store, and uh, for some reason, all their friends are shopping, too. Yes, <laughs> yes, as you do. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And I like to hear his fun comments, like, oh, you guys look like a, a married couple. <laughs> so cute. And, like, Sharon's trying to throw Takashi in the same boat as him, because they were like, oh, you do groceries? Oh, my gosh. And Sharon's like, well, Takashi's here, too. He's like, buddy, I'm just here for the chips. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't know. Like, I guess I don't really know about his home life, that, that he's, like, alone. Yeah. I think they're they're the type of friends where mm. they know of Shoutan, but they don't know him, like, personally, personally. Like, they're not in the inner sanctum yet. <laughs> yeah. But then you fast forward to uh, arc four, and Naoko, Naoko just, like, blows our minds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we have a cute scene where uh, Sharon's helping Sakura with math, and then he says that she, he, she can help him with Japanese. Um, and then, like, this is the moment where Sharon officially apologizes. So it's really sweet. So sweet. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad, like, he's finally... Because I think also his conversation he had with Mei Lin as well, was it last chapter or the chapter before? Yeah. It's kind of making him realize he doesn't want to live that way anymore. No. So I think this is his first step in kind of trying to amend things and actually try to act the way he really wants to. So, yeah, I think not only is it an apology, but it's also his first step in kind of mending the bridge that he created. (laughs) (laughs) It's like he he first he broke the bridge, now he's fixing the bridge. (laughs) Yes, yes. The bridge that that he said he had no feelings Mm for. (laughs) (laughs) All comes full circle. (laughs) So the next morning, um, they found out they fell asleep on the couch. We're late for school again, but like on the plus side, they were still in their uniforms. (laughs) 
I can just picture them rolling up to school looking all wrinkly and musty. <laughs> yeah. So Naoko talks about how the last production was Phantom of the Opera, and we have a flashback from 22 years ago when Nadeshiko gets the part of Christine. So basically they say that the pranks started as mild to killing the actor who played Raoul yeah. when a chandelier dropped on him. Like, Sharon doesn't believe this for a second, but now it goes like, yes, and they died. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to believe that a kid died. Yeah, like, I want to say that maybe we find out eventually it was just this, uh, a story, but I don't know. Like, that's kind of ringing a bell in my head, but also, escalation. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny little pranks to a kid died. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's haunted. <laughs> and I'm like, would Wish Chan really kill a character? Which, like, if she was writing it now, she wouldn't do that. But, like, <laughs> did she really do that? Hey, when you're 14, little 15. vindictive teenager, <laughs> I'm, hey, I would maybe do it too. <laughs> Yeah, so so this is how the theater got its haunted reputation. And um and and Sharon's like, Yeah, that's not real. But in the story there is a mention of uh Rearen because it's like, yes, and then the first violinist, he moved the the, the guy out of the way and then he was hospitalized and because earlier Melanie is that was telling me that somebody died and like this was before I read the chapter and I'm like nobody died and then I like listened to the chapter and I'm like, Oh my god, somebody died <laughs> I can't get over that. <laughs> and for those of you that may have not seen this show on Broadway or know much of it, there is an actual scene in Phantom of the Opera where the chandelier does drop and the phantom does kill somebody. Like, that is an actual scene. So, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, Moonstone comes out and um, basically... He they. <laughs> yes. yes, they point uh, point out that the handcuff belonged to Mizuki Miyara, and Miho's mother, so, so she's Miho's mother, and we get a flashback of how jealous Miyara used to be of Nadeshiko, because Miyara was Nadeshiko's understudy, and in her head she's like, if Nadeshiko gets handcuffed, that means I can have the part of Christine, and then Miren is going to see me from first violin, and he's going to love me forever. <laughs> Yeah, but, but but things don't go as planned. But, like, they don't have to worry about a key because apparently their powers are stronger than Sharon and Sakura's, which, like... You know, you know? <laughs> burn on you, kids. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, okay, guys, just, just go to the basement. Hopefully you'll find the key. And, um, oh, yeah, my advice to you, stick together. <laughs> So we have everybody, so Sharon and Sakura, they go in the basement and they find old props from Phantom of the Opera, which is really fun because they see the, the dress that Nadeshiko wore and the chandelier and it's like, oh look, there's a mask. And then they see the mask is floating. Ooh, that would be <laughs> so scary. Yeah. Like I even like ghosty type stuff mm. and even that would freak me the heck out. Like uh, I would, I would be out, I would be running. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like the way that like... Like, you know, she actually tried to, to capture him, and it's like, oh, that was easy, and then it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And I also like the way that Phantom is tied to the theater, because it gives him some sort of security, but even Tomoyo's like, yeah, he's there for now, and he could break the seal. <laughs> well, I think also it kind of shows us how Nadesco and Riren were able to deal with forces without actually having the ability to capture them. So it was more like, it kind of reminds me of... Um, in Yuashu a little bit, where she had the ability just to, like, kind of seal things into a certain area. Like, that's what it kind of reminds me of. So it kind of also shows us how they were able to deal with forces. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But, like, I think I think we should ask Wish Chen about, like, uh, how did things work during the Deshiko era? Because if Sakura has the key, I still think that Nadeshiko must have had the key as well. It must have been Deshiko's key before it was Sakura's key. But the key was in the cloud book. Wasn't it? And then and then Kiro gives Sakura yeah. the key. Yeah, I I don't remember the lore. So <laughs> so if they so if they're looking for the cloud card book, they technically wouldn't have the key yet. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So they were pre cloud cloud card books. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, because that's their whole thing. Is that's 
their mission as the parents is to find the cloud card book. Mm, mm -hmm, Yeah, so they mm -hmm. wouldn't have had the key yet. Wow. So, Sakura frees them from the handcuffs, but Sharon still uses this as an opportunity to invite Sharon to stay with him, to stay with her, him, and um, when she accepts, Tomoyo's was like, no! Yeah. <laughs> <That> <laughs> trying to do my, my Melanie impression of Tomoyo. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, Tomoyo, we love her. <laughs> oh, she's the best. She's my favorite to voice. <laughs> now it's time for Dark Forces Corner. So we get to see the fiery, the freeze, and the explosive in action to uh, attempt to take off the handcuffs, but that was all fruitless. And like, could you just imagine having handcuffs like, oh my god, it's burning! Oh my god, it's frozen! And and how the how did she manage to contain explosives to not like just explode the just whole take room? Take off their hands. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, the invisible came into play to hide the handcuffs. And the phantom makes his first appearance, and the card that Sakura uses to try to beat him is fiery. Crazy. Lots of, lots of cards this chapter. Lots of cards. Do you think that's a record so far? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not keeping tabs on, on how many cards were... Because it's like, yeah, they were used, but they weren't effective. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. But I feel like this might be a record for most cards mentioned in a chapter, though. Probably, probably. Ooh, so for the fan art spotlight, it's a Sakura and Sharon hand- handcuff by Dragur... Either, I don't know if it's Dragur OK or Dragur Rock, a.k.a. Sebastian. Oh, it's so... Cu- He's such a good artist. <laughs> I love that. I always wanted to see that... Yes. Animated. It's so cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's fun because I was coaching him when he was he was doing this fan art and like he kept sending me his whips and I'm like, okay, well then do this, do that. Oh, and they should be wearing these clothes. And I, I found pictures for references. Mm-hmm. And then like originally Sharon didn't have his like this arm over here. It was just hanging and I'm like, oh, you can make his left arm like just spread out and he's good at drawing hands. He is very, I'm so jealous at how he's able to draw hands and also he does such a good job of drawing soccer with long hair. I feel like every time I try it just looks weird (laughs) and Sharon looks older. He did a good job at that too. Like Excellent job, Sebastian. Excellent job. Yes, this was posted um, in 2012 for New Trial's 13th anniversary. Wow. Yeah. So, and um, the reason I suggested this to him is because I was doing the uh, 100 Themes Project, and there was a prompt called Unbreakable, and I'm like, so I had the idea in my head, and and he made it come to life. (laughs) So cute. Yes. Now it's time for the author's notes. Alrighty. So we have Wish Chan. Hee hee, this is the gateway. I won't say any more. Have you ever been hit by a soccer ball? I have, and it hurts. Imagine being handcuffed to the person you like. I think I'll like it. Hee hee. Kaido Magician is always ready to cause problems. Er, he stole the 5 4 scroll back from Edon and Erika. Don't ask how, it's thief like ways. Oh yeah, and keep in mind that there's the phantom in the basement of the theater, which Sakura can't seal as a card, who may escape one day, dot, dot, dot. (laughs) See, this is great, because uh, Wish Chen, she's like, have you ever been hit by a soccer ball? I have. And anyone who's listened to our Q&A series with Wish Chen, she actually delves into this a bit more. Yes, yes. I... We would reprise it again, but I really recommend you go back and listen to the Q&A and hear it from her words verbatim. It's, it's, it's a super cute story. Well, until you get hurt, but like... Yeah, but... <laughs> that, part, that part aside, I, I really... It's, it's like, uh, she, she mentions that. <laughs> yes. And I love the fact she mentions this is a gateway, because as Priya mentioned last episode, this is the phantom does not get caught until arc three apparently <laughs> so do you think that's what she's referring to i think like i yeah yeah and yeah gateway a gateway this is a gateway i won't say anymore or do you think it's the gateway to them living together and going into mm. the summer adventure stuff i guess we could also interpret we it we could that interpret way. it both ways because the, the phantom is not uh, a one and done boom bam thank you ma'am <laughs> <laughs> kind of kind of force <laughs> It's it's gonna be sticking around for a while, so so I think Wish Chan's really excited about that, and 
now we have like official confirmation that Sharon has invited Sakura to live with him. So so this is this is another important thing happening in this chapter that's called living together. <laughs> Aww, such a good chapter. So cute. So you have been listening to New Trials the Podcast, where it must rain for there to be a rainbow. You've been listening to New Trials the Podcast. Please be sure to check out the audiobook version of this fan fiction that you can find anywhere that you can find this podcast. Also, please be sure to check out the fa- Facebook fan page for New Trials, where a big part of the discussions happen nowadays. And please be sure to stick around next week where we discuss Chapter 27, Galloping Through Thundercloud. <laughs>